Giles Online. Hi everyone, in Psalm 86 it says, For great is your love toward me, you have delivered me from the depths, from the realm of the dead. When we remind ourselves of that truth, how can our worship be anything other than wholehearted and full of gratitude? Enjoy the service. Good morning and welcome to St Giles. I'm Lee, I'm the Vicar of St Giles and as you can see today we are celebrating communion together. So there's still time if you can grab some bread and some wine you can join in at home as well. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you. 
Our reading today is Luke chapter 24, beginning at verse 13, on the road to Emmaus. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognising him. He asked them, What are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, Are you only a visitor to Jerusalem and do not know these things that have happened in these days? What things? he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb, and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. He said to them, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village where they were going, Jesus acted as if he was going further, but they urged him strongly, stay with us for it is nearly evening, the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, Were not our hearts burning within us as he talked with us on the road and opens the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two of them told what happened on the way and how Jesus was recognised by them when he broke the bread. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just heard your word uh, read, and now we pray that you would speak to us about Jesus, who is the bread of life, the living word. Lord, speak to our hearts by your spirit that we might respond in faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. One of the great marvels of scripture is the way that uh, minor characters seem to embody the entire story. Uh, They're not just bit part actors, uh, but they carry within them uh, the hopes and ambitions and dreams of the audience who are watching along as well. They don't just uh, simply uh, come and go and uh, explain something of what is happening uh, to do with Jesus. They encounter him uh, for themselves and in them uh, we see ourselves. The most dramatic examples of this occur, I think, in the story of the crucifixion. Think of Simon of Cyrene. He's dragged out from the crowd and made to carry the cross. Uh, He carries the cross as he follows behind Jesus. Just as Jesus told his disciples that they would need to carry their cross if they would follow him. Or think of the criminal who is crucified next to Jesus. He receives forgiveness at the very last minute when all he can say is, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He stands for all of us who cry out to Jesus for forgiveness and who realise that we have nothing of worth to offer him. It is all grace. All we can do is to plead that he remember us and he promises that he will take us into paradise. Think too of the Roman centurion who supervises Jesus' execution and then exclaims in the words uh, that can be echoed by billions of Gentile followers of Jesus in the centuries to come. Surely this man was the son of God. 
One writer whose work I really appreciate is Andrew Wilson. He's a Christian thinker, uh, theologian, and he's written on this theme. And he writes powerfully of uh, Barabbas as the supreme example of this, uh, seeing ourselves in the story of those who encounter Jesus. Barabbas is a prisoner who is released at the trial of Jesus. Uh, Barabbas is due to die for his sins, and he deserves to die. Yet without doing anything uh, to merit mercy, he is released. He began that Friday expecting, anticipating a cr uh, cruel, agonising death for his crimes. And yet on that evening, he finds himself celebrating the Sabbath with his family. We are clearly intended to see ourselves in this man. Destined to death, but fi finding life and freedom through the death of the Messiah. Wilson writes this. It becomes clear that this is not merely an exchange, but a substitution. Jesus doesn't just die instead of Barabbas. He dies in place of Barabbas as his substitute, his representative. We know this because, and this is often missed, Barabbas and Jesus stand accused of the same crime. Sedition, insurrection, treason. Barabbas is a revolutionary who has directly challenged Roman rule. And the story of the crucifixion is, of course, followed by the story of the, <clears throat> of the resurrection. And this thing continues as seeing ordinary people encountering this extraordinary figure, Jesus of Nazareth, who is the resurrection and the life. And so we come to these two disciples on the Emmaus Road. I think this is my favourite among the stories of the disciples encountering the risen Jesus. And that's because following our theme, I can see so much of myself in them. I can see my story in their story, and perhaps you can too. Look how this story starts. Jesus walked with them and they were kept from recognising him. I wonder if that has been your experience. That has been my experience for sure. I became a Christian when I was uh, 17 through reading uh, Gideon's New Testament. And I always carry with me uh, a Gideon's Bible. This was a present to me uh, from the Gideons. And um, although I became a Christian at 17, I can remember uh, the day when I first realised that Jesus was alive and had died in, play, in my place and I could uh, receive forgiveness from him and I had the joy of meeting him, encountering him uh, for myself. Although I can remember that day, uh, looking back now, I can see that in the years preceding that, and particularly the months preceding that day, uh, Jesus walked with me, although I didn't recognise him. Um, he was preparing my heart uh, to receive him. He was preparing my eyes to be open to his presence. I began reading the scriptures, and as I uh, read the scriptures, as I read that Gideon's New Testament, more and more I saw who Jesus was. I wonder if you could say the same thing. Or perhaps you're just at the moment coming to recognise who Jesus is. You're aware of your heart be, being strangely warmed as you read of him in the scriptures. You're aware of the light beginning to break into the darkness. God is at work in your life, whether you realise it or not, whether you see it fully or not. Cleopas and his companion are walking in disappointment. And as that memorable verse, um, we had hoped but the unrecognised Jesus guides them in a Bible study. Beginning with Moses and the prophets, he explained why the Messiah had to die and how he would rise again. And as he explains the scriptures to them, their hearts are, are warmed and they're prepared for their eyes to be opened. I know of no better remedy for a downtrodden heart, a disappointed faith, than to turn afresh to the scriptures and encounter Jesus in the pages there. When I'm feeling weary, when uh, faith is hard, when I'm feeling spiritually dry, I always turn again to the gospels, to Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. I hear afresh the words of Jesus. I see afresh the acts of Jesus. I read again of his death and his resurrection. And as I do so, I ask the Father to open my eyes again to the glory of his Son. I ask the Spirit to speak again to my heart and uh, to warm my faith uh, with the knowledge of Jesus. 
Remember the words of Peter, that disciple of Jesus. When he was feeling uh, disappointed and when he was finding it hard, yet he reaffirmed his faith in the Lord. Where else can we go, he said to Jesus, because you have the words of eternal life. Look at how this story of the encounter on the Emmaus Road concludes. Jesus enters into a home with them. They settle down for a simple meal. And then the Lord, well, he, he takes the bread, he gives thanks, he breaks it, and he gives it to them. And as he does so, their eyes are opened. They realize it is the Lord. Transformed, they rush back to Jerusalem and then with the disciples they declare, it is true. They've moved from, uh, they've moved from, we had hoped to it is true. The Lord Jesus has given us this meal, uh, the communion meal, the sharing of bread and wine as a simple reminder of who he is and as a means of grace, a way of encountering him. Do this in remembrance of me, he says. We are to remember him. We are to put back together the story of who he is. And as we put that back together, as we remember it, so he remembers us. So he puts us back together as we encounter him afresh. We remember that he is the bread of life. We remember that his blood was shed for the sins of the world. We remember that he died, is risen, and will come again. And as we do so, we encounter him afresh. And so my uh, prayer, whenever I see, um, have communion again, is to, uh, that I will remember Jesus. And as I uh, give communion, my prayer is that um, those who receive communion will remember him and he will remember them and that they will encounter him afresh. And that's my prayer uh, for you today. A few years ago, I had a special birthday and uh, Sally, my wife, paid, made a present for me. She paid for me to go and learn how to bake bread. And uh, the day began at a, a bakery, the famous uh, French baker, bread maker. And uh, he prepared bread for us uh, for breakfast. And as we uh, shared bread together, he said, now we are companions. And he explained that the word companion means the company of those who share bread together, companions. So though we celebrate this um, uh, sharing of communion in our homes on our own or perhaps one or two uh, gathered together, we remember that we are part of the company of Christ. We are companions with one another and chiefly we are companions of the Lord Jesus who is himself the bread of life. So let's share communion together today. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's right to give thanks and praise. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son on the night before he died, had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then after supper, he took the cup of wine. Again, he gave thanks and he said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him, we plead with confidence, his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. So draw near in faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you. 
and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. Lord, help us to see the way. I pray that we will be able to um, go that way with you, Lord. Amen.
Well, good morning, St. Giles. This is the interview bit of the vidcast. I'm Emma Rez. And as you know, every week we chat to a lovely member or members of our congregation. Now, this one, for me, this week is a little bit different. It's finally got to the time where it's time for me to interview my very own family. So we're joined by the Ayers boys. We've got my husband, Jonathan, and my two children, Benjamin and Thomas. Good morning! Morning. <laughs> How are you all? I mean, we, this is weird because I'm in the living room and you're in the office, but um, I'm going to treat this like a kind of normal interview and just ask you, Johnny, how the last year's been for the Ayers family? Um, well, I don't think it was the first, it's not the first year of marriage that I signed up for. No. That's um, I, I don't think, I don't think when we stood there on the, uh, in front of everyone at St Giles that uh, we'd expect that the entire world would shut down in the first year. No, for those that don't know, me and I got one of the very last sort of non-COVID weddings. We got married um, on the 14th of December in 2019, just before kind of things all kicked off. So yeah, whilst we've been together a long time, first year of marriage. <laughs> very <laughs> and Benjamin you've been off you've been doing homeschooling uh, but now you're back at school how is life back at school are you enjoying it yes <laughs> you're enjoying it it's really weird interviewing your own children um, and in terms of um you Johnny you normally work in an office and you've been home-based um working from home now for over a year do you think things will change do you think you'll go back to the office or is this it now uh, well, now I think that there will be a, um, a great a, a balance. And my intent, my intention is working from home for probably three days a week uh, with the office two two days a week or um, side work, whatever. Um, but yeah, that it'll it won't be back to the office forty hours a week. Now I don't spend an awful lot of time in the office because um, you know you're there working every day. I didn't realise quite how much whiskey you appear to have in the office behind you. Well, you've, you've got to, you've got to, uh, got to find what uh, gets you through the day. <laughs> and as a family, in terms of faith, how's it been over the last year? Um, I thought, I think, um, you know, the silver lining of lockdown is that I've been forced to. Uh, rethink my my working day I, i've always i've always been uh an early starter you know even even in the back of the days of the office i'd be i'd be in the office for half six um whereas these days i'm, I'm still up and i'm still in here in the office for half six but you know for the first 45 minutes i get i get time to uh, spend a bit of time on my own, reflect, um, read, read my Bible. Uh, you know, so you were a big podcast as well, aren't you? Yeah, I, I've always, I've always listened to um, podcasts, even in the, even in the office, but I think it's fair to, share, fair to say that my listening to podcasts has, has gone on tenfold during lockdown. It's, it's nice to hear uh, other men talk about their faith um and, and the, the topics the, the podcasts i've been listening to are very in nature um but it, it's 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 insightful i think um it, I've, I've listened to a lot where uh, they've talked about their own their own experiences during lockdown um and how how the, the year's been for them it's so it's it's insightful um to, to understand that this this has affected everybody. You know, it, it's very it's very easy to um, it's very easy to get hung up of, of, of the difficulties that you're having on your uh, as, a, as as an individual or a family. But um, yeah, it, I think it's it, I think it's good to. Get, get perspective that, that uh, the rest of the world is, is suffering, uh, suffering as well. Some to greater, greater, greater. Um... I, I, Benjamin, I've got my final question for you because this is turning into chaos. But my chaos. Final question for you, Benjamin, have a listen. You're back at junior church today. 
um, later yeah. on today, actually in the building. Are you excited about going back? And what, what are you most looking forward to? Um, seeing Olivia and Joshua. Right, so seeing your friends will be really, really nice. And finally, before we go, have you got a prayer for everybody going back to junior church or in church services? Go on then. Thank you for the people. I thank you for all the people who are going back to junior church in the building. Amen. Amen. Well, the airs, gentlemen, it's lovely and bizarre to have spoken to you. Thank you very much. Bye. Can I come back in the house now? <laughs> Yeah, you can. Thank you, Emma. Lovely to see you all. Um, don't forget that we have a service in church next week at 9 a.m. before we go online at 10 a.m. Um, the 9 a.m. service is going to be like our um, sort of old 10.30 service. So contemporary worship, we'll have the worship band. Uh, there'll be a proper sermon, if you like. So it's not an all-age service, although young people are welcome. Um, we won't have any particular children's activities or young people activity, but they're welcome uh, to join us. But it'll be a kind of a, a regular 10.30 style service, although it is, of course, at 9 o'clock. And you do need to sign up for that. So please do sign up for that online. And of course, we've got our uh, junior church happening at 11 o'clock today and 11 o'clock next week in the church building. Um, so we're going to continue in worship and we've got worship online later today at 6 p.m. Let's worship together. Let's close with a blessing. God, who through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ has given us the victory, give you joy and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. 
Amen. Looking forward to seeing you soon. Take care, everybody.